Tune in to Basement Talk. I'm your host, Riz the King. <laughs> Get this man to say something stupid. This is G-Ray coming out of St. Louis. Look at my phone. It's an argument about pride. <laughs> man, I'm telling you. So this is real life for me. <laughs> Went to fine fine. Oh, I'm fine in the house, baby. Leave I'm fine in the house. We fine. We didn't make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. <laughs> hey, y'all wake up. He's gonna be exhausted. Welcome back to Basement Talk. I'm your man's Riz the King. As you can see, I'm here with a flock of new people right now. Reason being, G Man's out of town, so we holding it down for him while he's not here. So I'm gonna let y'all go around and tell me who you, you know. Tell me who you are. So let's start with you, bro. Call Grant. Big T, Matt Berger, Last Man Up Podcast, BG, that's what's up. So I got these gentlemen on the show today because we've been we're gonna talk about the thing that's been going on in the NBA right now between Kobe and LeBron. It's been a lot of talk with LeBron being better than Kobe. Kobe going on talking about how don't forget my about my rings and all this extra stuff going on on Twitter and Instagram wherever he posting this stuff. Finally, to me, he wants to be relevant. So I'm gonna let these guys. Tell me how they feel about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to start from this side. Tell me how you feel about Kobe and LeBron, what it is. Well, I mean, I basically, like I said, I, I think LeBron is a phenomenal player. I, I do think he's the best player in the game right now. But at times, I think he, he shows, uh, he, has a, he has a lot of to be, to be desired. You know, for example, back when he said, you guys, I score you guys with my play. Absolutely. I can't, I can't rock with no guy like that. When he said that, the greatest of all time. How long ago he said that? After the Boston series, it had to be 2009. When he when he left and went to Miami? No, right. It was the year before he left, <clears throat> and they lost the year before that. Yeah, 2009, because he went to Miami. They lost two years in a row. Mm -hmm. They lost two. So the first year after first the year. loss, and he got on stage, got on camera, and said, <laughs> "I don't know, guys. I, I guess I have to spoil you with, with my play because they asked him some questions." Sure. Which, you know, which mm -hmm. happened. You make. Millions of dollars to play basketball. And they said, "Hey, yeah. what about this play? What about that play?" I, said, I don't know, guys. I guess I just spoil you with exactly. my greatness. Exactly. And, and, and let's not forget what he said after they lost to the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 NBA Finals, when he basically told the reporters, "Yeah, when this is all said and done, I'm going back to being me. And you. you all get to go back to being you." Yeah. And yeah, that probably turned a lot of people off as well. To me, context is everything. Right. All right. So LeBron was drafted number one to his home city of Cleveland with a $90 million contract behind him before he set foot in the league. What does that mean? Can you name what other All-Star that was on Cleveland when LeBron got drafted? Kobe got drafted 13th to Charlotte, all right? Eddie Jones was ahead of All-Star. Nick Van Exel, Shaquille O'Neal, the most dominant center in the league, right? Context is everything. Your road is going to be a little bit tougher, and it's right. like the circumstances dictate that. Like maybe I don't come out, I don't average twenty points a game my first year. Who rolled? Who rolled with Harden? That Kobe rolled with Harden. Yeah, <clears throat> Big Matt Axel in front of him, mm -hmm. Eddie Jones, mm -hmm. a young Shaquille O'Neal, mm -hmm. Rick. I mean, he had a stack team. LeBron, when you can come into the league as a as a superior athlete, mm -hmm. and the NBA needs you to be a success. Your team needs you to be a success. Your city needs you to be a success. You don't think you're given every opportunity to succeed, good, bad, or indifferent? Put Kobe with that type of mentality, that work ethic, in any other city, which say, like, hey, you, you take the ball from day one, dribble one, and do anything you want to do from, from, the, from the jump. You don't think his stats will be comparable to LeBron at this point? I'm going I just to, think um, that's... And it's the whole stats thing is crazy. It's not right? apples to it, apples? It's not apples to apples. Everybody knows the NBA is played totally different than you know it was in the past. You know, uh, he's gonna have, he's gonna be the leader in all the stats when it's all said. Who is he? LeBron, LeBron James. James. Okay. You, th you think he's gonna run down uh, Kareem and be the all-time points leader? He'll be close to it. I mean, I, and I, I think he legitimately will get close. But to me, that doesn't tell a true story of his career. What tells the true story of his career is when you go to the sidelines after a big play. And you don't talk to your teammate, then you start throwing a diva fit, and you start looking for your purse at the post game. And <laughs> so, okay, so you're, so you're talking about game one. Go ahead. And we're talking about uh, LeBron right here. Right. right. Okay. So before 
I don't want to say anything yet. I'll let you guys get it out. But I, want to, I want to make sure we're on the same page for the audience. So um, the first statement was, not even about basketball. We're talking about the personality I was all outside the court. Sure. The conversation. So I'm going to put that right here. The next thing we said for your argument's sake was that this man had a harder role playing with Shaquille O'Neal and two and another all-star, Eddie Jones, and Nick Van Exel. So having a nice team is a burden on you. I'm going to put that right here. And then you just said a diva and throwing a fit and pouting. That's in game. In, in game, right, in game. That's in game. In game. Throwing a fit and pouting. Yeah. I'm going to put that right there too. Go ahead. No, I mean, oh, I mean, wait, well, you can unpack that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got three minutes. So, okay. Well, I'm going to unpack. I'm going to start backwards. So, throwing a fit on the court. We go ignore the Phoenix series where they were up 3 1. Phoenix came back. And in the fourth quarter, Kobe decided he's not going to shoot anymore. Actually, the second half. Second half. Wasn't oh, going to shoot half, anymore. Shoot no more. Threw a fit he did throw in it. a playoff game. Yeah. And yeah. refused to play. Well, we're going to leave that alone for right now. Uh, having a stacked team, and it's, it's a hindrance. Mm-hmm. Okay. LeBron James couldn't beat out Eddie Jones if he was in that squad. You think Eddie Jones would have been starting if LeBron James on that roster? But I think, that's, I think you've proven our point. Is, you, do you feel like LeBron James is the greatest player of all time? No, no, I don't. No. So you, who do you think is MJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If so, you have some semblance of some. Semblance. Yeah. A lot of people think he's the greatest player of all time. That's the banter and the talk as of right now. I ignore that. Talk. You, you cannot. You, you cannot tell me. Uh, and like I said, I acknowledge that I think he's actually a better overall player than Kobe. But what I can acknowledge is in key situations, killer instinct, whatever you want to call it, he ain't got that dog. Wait a minute. No. How you feel about that? Because he just said that <coughs> LeBron is better overall than Kobe. Who else agrees with that? Oh, I do. Well, well, I agree with that. I do you agree with that? I, I refuse to answer that question because Blasphemy didn't ask it. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I, I think Kobe, LeBron is the most physically gifted basketball player that has ever been. Like, if you can build, it's like okay, let's say you take Cam Newton. And then you if you were to go into the Cam is like absolutely. Flop like so, it's like you have to. But I think <laughs> most actual basketball players within the league, they have a worship for Kobe Bryant. You know why? Because they know what it's like to like take your game from A to Z. LeBron, you can't. I, no matter what I do, I can't be LeBron. I can't right. be six that nine. Said he ain't got that. So you're based on what you're saying because the physical <laughs> gifts that LeBron has. It kind of makes Kobe greater because he had to overcome more physically. Because than what Kobe had. honed his craft. Kobe came in and shot three air balls as a rookie. Yeah. You know, couldn't shoot. And the, the three or four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, said, I, said, I said I didn't want to no. drink during the conversation. Listen, you, you take those things as a negative. We take that as a positive. I couldn't do this. Now I can do this. Now I have the best jump shot in the game. Now I have the best, the best mid-range in the game. There's nothing that you can say, okay, LeBron is the best. This is just the most physically imposing well, you, athlete when, in when, the sport. When LeBron physically starts declining, what is he going to be able to go to to continue mm-hmm. to be dominant? So I must point out. Yeah, to you know, I'm going to point out. <laughs> if he does, if he does. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not going to work. Right. <laughs> He's in your 15. Right. Mm-hmm. So he should have been declining. And never had But, but, but he never had. Never had. <laughs> that long term. And, and, that's, and that's not a knock against him. Nah, I mean. Okay, you talk like it's a knock. It's no, not well, I, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Right. Yeah, but, Alex Guerrero is in this basement somewhere too. Right? You have to somebody for not being injured. For not being injured. How dare you stay healthy? <laughs> <laughs> but to your point about you? not How dare you? improving. He didn't have a three-point shot like he uh, had this year. In the other years when he was first in Cleveland, he didn't have that shot. I give you that recently. He, he, he didn't have uh, three years. he didn't have any back to the basket uh, game in, in Cleveland. He got that in Miami, and actually worked with uh, Olajuwon to get that game. He didn't have that, but you all discredit that. His mental his mental awareness. He didn't have that initially in Cleveland. He didn't have that. I don't think anybody discredits that. I think what what but, you what you look at is the overall aggressive nature of their game, right? Okay. So as a, well, you, so, well, as, you as, changed your argument, but go ahead. No, I did not. I, you, that, there's no one. There's, there's, you said Kobe I, I, started I, I, out with 0 for three from the field, and you indicated no, as, no, no. as if I, Kobe if, if, he shot three air balls. Oh, three air balls. Yes. And you were speaking as if Kobe evolved his game and improved, and LeBron has it added to his craft. I, Kobe was the same player when he shot them three air balls 
but kept shooting. That's the same guy that scored with 60 on his last game. Continue what you were saying though about his lack of aggressiveness because I have something to add to it. Okay, so uh, you're talking so, about LeBron's lack, right. lack of aggressiveness. So honestly, I'll be I'll keep it completely honest. When LeBron came into the league, I'm like, I I wanted him to be the next Jordan. I'm like, oh my god, I was a super fan. But I would watch him play and it would frustrate me. Sure. Because I'm like, oh my goodness, like do, if you don't just take that little guy it happens to down the to the like post he and just moments. so. Okay. That, so that's the difference. So when I watch Kobe, if he has a, a 6'1 guy on him, guess what he's doing? He's bodying him all day. If you right. got a seven foot guy on him, he's going right. to do the same thing. Kobe, just, he's relentless. Go ahead. I used to have a show on 590 The Fan, mm -hmm. and we had on Brendan Haywood, who was a college basketball analyst when I had him on, mm -hmm. part of the North Carolina Tar Heels and also part Absolutely. of the 2011 Dallas Mavericks when they won the championship over, over my Miami Heat and LeBron. Gotcha. And out. okay, out. Yeah, he did because yeah. I asked him. I asked Brendan Haywood. I go, were you just? As, I asked him this on the air. This is exactly what he said. I go, were you just as stunned as everybody else that LeBron was afraid to post up JJ Barea, yeah. who's like my height? I'm five Absolutely. ten. Okay, Absolutely. this is exactly what Brendan Haywood said. He goes, Yeah, we all were. He goes, In fact, whenever we were on the court, whoever was the defensive liability guarded LeBron because he was he was so passive absolutely in his play so the like the biggest frustration that anybody has about LeBron is that and he, you can't you can't uh, dispute that but one thing you got to say in LeBron's favor no athlete that I can think of has grown up under more has come up under, under more pressure in a bigger yeah. microscope and he is without a doubt the first social media athlete mm -hmm. of this generation. Do you think Jordan could have survived with all of his philandering and all of his off-court yeah. hijinks yeah. and everything yeah. that, that Michael Jordan yeah. You think he could survive in this day Absolutely. and age? There's no way. I agree. Yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah, there's no way. And I, I just want to say, like, just to be clear, no one, like, I know we've had this conversation, obviously, off camera several times, but we're not saying we don't. LeBron is fantastic. But to say, like, he's just not – He's missing a few things that we consider to be crucial to be like that right. A plus 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 player. It's not a knock on him. We're just it's apparent. It's yes. yes. Well, you know, you're, 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 you're almost begging him. Uh, Rick Carlisle out through that series. He's like at some point he's waiting to make that adjustment. Yeah. Because he's gonna go. Okay, LeBron's eventually he's gonna post. Him. He's gonna snap. Eventually he's gonna post him. Eventually he's gonna take advantage. Wait, he's not taking advantage of the situation right. at all. Right. Now your team is like. Dude, what? Hey, as a Miami Heat fan, I was stunned. Dude, I, have to, I was, I was, I was on my knees in front of my TV, begging through the TV mm -hmm. for him to start being aggressive, and he never listened. So, to I, you would rather lose with your best player being as aggressive as Absolutely. possible, as opposed to saying like, ah, oh, you know what, this is just not my night, or this is not. You're in the biggest stage. That, that this is the perfect example of how we have this, the, the, our blinders on. We, we hold on to that moment. People hold on to that moment. Kobe fans hold on to that moment. He's progressed since then. He ain't that same guy. The guy that was uh, that came back in Golden State right. and won a championship, that LeBron wouldn't have lost to Dallas. So He but has T, progressed. I get it, but T, he didn't progress when he comes down the court. And I hate when people say he makes the best play. I don't care if George Hill is cutting to the lane, butt naked, wide open. Mm -hmm. You've been cooking. And you've you been Steph. cooking everybody. You got Steph on you at the top of the key. Mm -hmm. Boy, if you don't rise up and, and the game is what? Was they up one or down one? Up down one. Down one. Down Boy, one. if you don't take rise up over this six three guard and take mm -hmm. this shot, I, I wanted him to hit that shot. Okay, so, so let me ask you this: If he takes that shot and he misses it, and it's clear that George Hill was wide open and that was a better play, you don't think he's going to hear that? Why did he make that bad shot? That's not his shot. Nobody will, yeah, but you go down. And, at the end of the day, LeBron had what? How many, how many points did he have? 51. 51. I don't okay. want to. Ain't nothing talking. Nope. Ain't nobody talking to me. Nobody. Okay. Uh, Kobe fan and Kobe fan. This is this no. This is like the Kobe fan attitude. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? At least I went down shooting. And, and, that's and that's, and that's I, the Kobe fan attitude. What? I'm not saying it's a knock, I, but, but that's the Kobe. That's the Kobe fan I, attitude. I, I At least I went down shooting. I, no, I get that point. Of, I get that perspective. But honestly, I think had he not <laughs> made that pass. And he misses that shot. Nobody's looking at that cut. Well, the, the, that, that's a tough pass. Hey, but the answer no, one, that's a tough. But so the if, answer if, he was, if he was under the basket by himself, and, and he didn't have pass, he was cutting, and the guy's like, he's not. 
maybe a half a step behind him. George Hill wasn't Patrick even cutting, though. George Hill was actually moving to clear space. Right. He wasn't even trying yeah, to right. cut. So when LeBron you. passed him, George Hill didn't even want the ball. Right. 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 I'm trying to get out your way. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even want the ball. So if he don't pass the ball, nobody cares. Absolutely. To me, you know your players, you know your team. To me, you can't move Blaine. I don't want to hear George Hill 80% from the line. All you cannot shape Blaine. George Hill don't want that moment. Absolutely. George Hill ain't built for that moment. And George Hill did not you come built to for the that moment. Well, well, hold on. I want to But he's still a big free throw. I don't care. You're still a grown man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You got to make this free throw regardless. They, 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 it's still a free throw. And a professional. So, Jack, right. you're still a grown man. Stand. It's still a free throw. Right. I said the same thing. LeBron, you got to take that shot. Mm -hmm. During that whole transition, I put the first blame mm -hmm. on uh, Ty Lue for not uh, telling the refs, hey, I got a timeout in his right. back pocket. Mm -hmm. If we make him miss that free throw, timeout, I give him the first blame. But I put blame on LeBron with two, I agree. You got to take that shot. However, that is the correct basketball play. When Hill had that, when Hill had that ball, he was wide open. He never had the ball. No, no, no. He never had the ball. He had the ball. A boy kind of had the ball. He grabbed him before the ball got there. Right, right. Okay, but he wouldn't have grabbed him. He would have grabbed the ball. Would have been an easy layup. So it was the the right basketball play when he passed that ball to Daniel Marshall back in uh they facing the Spurs. That was the right basketball play when he hit that pass to Cal Corbin. And he missed that three. That was the right okay. basketball okay. play. Now it's not it's not that Kobe or Jordan mentality, which speaks to what you were saying about uh, other players. But that's the correct basketball me, play. You can't knock a man for making the right play. I would and your teammates not making that do their job.